Then Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Y'all all right this morning? That cold weather got you. It got you messed up. Golly, I don't like cold weather. Right? But we're here, and we got a lot of hunters out there in the woods. They're hoping the cold weather's got those deer out there. So hopefully later on today we'll have a Facebook post of the big deer got killed thanks to Grove members. Uh, doing all we can. Cold herd. Uh, Jesus' name. But shake it off here. Let's focus this morning, and I want you to see... And I want to ask you just a, a simple question this morning. If you had to tell somebody right now, right now, in this moment, what do you think? Well, what would you say? And don't say it, but what would you say? And so many times in our life, uh, we think about, you know, if you're a church, you mention all these things that you're thankful for. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for, uh, you know, communion. I'm thankful for all these kind of things. And that may be all true, but in a very practical sense, in a daily life, in a daily understanding, what are you thankful for? What things in life are you thankful for? And let me ask you this question. Is if you think about your life and how blessed you are, has it changed the way that you live your life? I believe that thankful people ought to be the most generous people around. In fact, what we find is people that are resentful are some of the harshest people around. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. You ready? He says, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, I, I don't know about you, but if I'm reading that one sentence and that one text, that one verse, I looked it off the page, and I said this morning, who wants to gather up sparingly, or who wants to gather up bountifully, everybody in here would say, put me on the bountiful gift, right? I, I want as much as I can get. Some of you are already ahead of me going, oh man, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I already know what that is. That's a, that's a tithing verse. Anytime I've ever been in church and the pastor got to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, they're talking about giving. Are you going to be talking about giving? Absolutely, 100% yes. I am. And some of you are going, Arr! it's because you're greedy. But, <laughs> but, giving is more, listen to me, more than just your pocketbook. I had a guy come up to me, this is the God's honest truth. If they watch this back, I'm not making fun of it. They had a, a, a legitimate concern. I had some folks that were visiting uh, another campus up, and they said, uh, and I know you're standing, I'll let you sit down to see. Uh, he said, uh, i got to answer you the question, preacher. And I said, okay. He said, I've been coming here for several weeks. I said, okay. And he said, we actually are involved in another church as well uh, with a small group. And he said, the church, this church, the grove came up. And I said, okay. And he said, i got a real concern. I said, okay, what was it? And he said, about your giving, how you give, what you do with the money that comes into the church. I said, okay, uh, how can I help you? And he said, well, you know, there's a pastor in Georgia that took up, he's trying to raise $65 million to buy a G6 jet. I said, yeah, I know him. He said, you know him? I said, I know of him. I've never met the guy. I've seen him on TV. He said, he's trying to, he's trying to raise $65 million for a jet. And everybody, I said, yeah, I know the story. I've heard that. And he said, well, the word on the street is that the Grove is giving money for his bed. <laughs> That's legitimate, right before I preach. I said, well, I don't know that man that well. And I can assure you, if there's going to be any jet ball, it'll be mine. <laughs> I said, no, sir, we don't give towards private planes. That's not what we do. We take in all that we can so we can give it away as practical ways. We want to give to people who need it. I don't need to fly somebody on a private plane. I'll tell you what I do need to do is I need to put food in the bottom for a little boy that's hungry today. We can give as much as we can to the Bible. Listen to me. I want to talk to you about giving. But giving is more than just your billfold. But I can see this. is If you'll look at your billfold, you can see where your heart is about giving. And I'll say this to you. If you're tight with your money, you're probably tight with the rest of your life as well. The best indicator of someone who is cheerful and thankful towards God is not in what they're doing week after week after week at God's house. It's what they're doing with the resources that God's already given them put in their back pocket. Now they can use that to expand the kingdom of God. You may not like that. Well, that's true. And so he says, if, if you sow sparingly, you will, you will reap sparingly. But then he says, each one must do just as he's proposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hey, have you ever gone to church or had to do something for church and it was a compulsion you had to do it? <laughs> right? Some of you get smart because somebody grudged you to church, you don't want to be here. You want me to finish as quick as I can, and I will. But you know what I believe? I believe that if your heart is on fire for Jesus Christ, I have never had to serve Christ and not want to do it. Jesus Christ is not a half to he's a get to. In every aspect of my life. Why are there so many people that go to churches, they visit church, they go, that's the most hateful church I've ever been part of. I didn't feel welcome at all. Why do you think that happens? Well, because they feel like they have to be there. It's because them getting to run into church and go, I get to be here. And when you get to be there, you want to bring everybody else you can to get to come get some of Jesus too. 
If I ever feel like I had to be here, you know what you do? Go, ooh. It's like some of y'all asked to go to Facebook and give a dinner. <laughs> and God is able to make all grace abound in you so that always having all sufficiency in everything you must have. You may have an abundance for every good deed as it is written. He scattered abroad. He gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. What a great verse. No vision. No method. No heartbeat. No effort is too big for Jesus Christ when he's in it because he supplies all the resources to get done what you're trying to do for him. Don't ever dream small for Jesus Christ. Some of you have crazy dreams for Jesus and you go, this is just too big, I can't pull it off. Let me explain something to you. If it's from God and he's supplying the resources, he will never fail. I don't care how big it is. The church needs to dream a little bit. You need to dream a little bit. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing, watch this, there's a reason we're in this passage, this passage, producing thanksgiving to God. That's the whole purpose of living a faithful life, is that it produces thanksgiving to other people towards God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. The whole point of what they're doing is bringing other people to give thanks to God. Because of the poor given by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the liberality of your contribution to them and to all. While they also, by prayer on your behalf, yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. In verse 15, he summarizes it in all and he says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Can I ask you a question this morning? Anybody thankful for Jesus Christ? What he's done in your life? If you have nothing else to be thankful for this morning, let me just make it real simple for you. If you don't want to write down one word to be thankful for, I'm thankful for Jesus. No sin. So here's the thing. We're talking about thankful living. And uh, in order to be thankful, sometimes you've got to sit back and think about what you're thankful for. Now, it goes without saying, I'm thankful for Christ and what He's done. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. And I'm thankful for what God's doing in our church and all, all those. And so uh, that's all my Jesus answers. And I'll get more to Jesus answers in just a moment. But I'm thankful for practical things. And I want to encourage you sometime this week or later today or tomorrow before Thanksgiving gets here that you write down a practical list of things that you're thankful for. Like what are some practical things that you're thankful for? Here's what I did. Is I wrote down a list this week and I gave it to the staff. And I, Drew last week shows up and he did a whole thing. Uh, you know, have things on the screen and all this other kind of stuff, and he's really good like that. Uh, and I'm not uh, because I'm just not. And so I'm, I'm, he kind of encouraged me. He's been talking to me about getting my points up on the screen, and he's been talking to me about all this stuff. So I thought I would attempt this week to follow up his. Last week, thank you by the way for preaching. Uh, but I would attempt by uh, putting some stuff on the screen. But here's what you don't know about me is maybe you do. I'm not tech savvy. Like, I don't know how to do all that stuff. And so uh, people get frustrated with me sometimes. Uh, but I just don't know certain things. And I don't even go looking for it. I'm not just, I, I don't care. And so uh, so what I did was, I sat there with Tyler and Andy and Drew. And PJ was there. But she's been kind of under the weather this week. And I said, here's what I want to do. I want to take my, my thankful list and I want to put it on the screen. But no problem. Just send it to us. I said, well, I really want it to be in pictures. Can you show pictures of what I'm thankful for? I'm going to try to do what Drew did. They said, yeah, that's fine. Just tell us what you're thankful for. So I gave them the list. They picked out the pictures. We're about to see it together. I have no idea what my pictures are. So, it may be a mass fire in the morning. I have no idea. So the first thing I'm thankful for, okay. I'm thankful for my wife. Uh, okay, I see what you're doing. All right, so I'm thankful for my wife. We've been married 15 years, uh, and uh, we're best friends. Uh, went to high school together. God's given us five beautiful children together, so I couldn't start any list of thankfulness without her first, uh, because she lets me come home every night, and uh, I want her to know how thankful I am, and I also like that hat. I'm pretty thankful for that hat, too, but uh, I really love my wife, and I'm thankful. Uh, my second thing, my children. You know, yeah, that's my children. Uh, you're a parent. There's some days you're more thankful than others. Y'all don't laugh. Y'all just like that. All spiritual. Yeah, you are. Oh, there's another one. I'm thankful for David Bell and Jeff Anderson. Uh, well, David Bell wasn't on my list, but Jeff Anderson was. I'm thankful for our staff. But now that I've seen it, I'm so thankful for David Bell. 
as well. Uh, but I think with our staff, okay, here we go. Uh, just move right through my list. Uh, there's some of our staff, uh, and uh, just thankful for all of them and, and what they mean. By the way, let me say this. I'm going to go to the next uh, I'm thankful, and I hope that you're thankful for your staff as well and, and what they mean to this church. We couldn't accomplish what we accomplished uh, without the hard working uh, 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 of them and, and what it means uh, for them to be here. So just in a very practical way, I'm, I'm thankful for the men and ladies that I get to work with. Next, what we got? Okay. <laughs> For guns, and apparently Drew dresses up like Arnold Schwarzenegger or the Terminator. That was pretty hilarious. I don't know if you've seen that picture, but Tyler Davis did that picture. That's so funny, right? <laughs> I'm thankful for Drew. I'm thankful for his friendship, but I'm thankful for his heart for missions, and I, I really can't imagine doing it. Okay, there's Tyler and Andy again. I'm thankful for Tyler and Andy. By the way, Andy and Natalie got engaged yesterday. <laughs> For those guys and what they do with our children and our student ministries each and every week. And, and what they I'm thankful for you. Uh, I'm thankful for, for what you mean to me uh, and uh, my family and my children. I'm thankful to call this church my home church. And, and uh, I told the guys one time, I said, even if I didn't work here, I'd go to church here. That's how much I love you. Uh, and, uh, you know, because of uh, uh, what you mean. And, and I'm very thankful for this church and this body and what it's doing. That's a real statement I told those guys this week. In fact, this week I brought them to the church on. I wrote in the office on Monday, and there's a lot of weeping and gnashing and wailing and crying. And I was like, what is wrong? They said, you resigned. And I said, I resigned. And so apparently I was last Sunday because I sent my kids to a football game. And so word from, a, from, from somebody uh, has said that I had resigned. So uh, then when I, I realized they were crying, not because they thought I had right, I resigned. They were crying because I actually did not work. And so uh, anyway... <laughs> I'm thankful for my church. I did not resign, by the way. You tell them, no, I didn't. Unfortunately, I'm still here. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, Lake Days. <clears throat> Aren't you thankful for where you live? Have you ever thought about it? I mean, I'm thankful for where we live. What's, what's next? What else we got up there? Oh, I'm thankful, I'm thankful for golf. Uh, that's Memphis playing golf. But I'm thankful that God gave me the health to enjoy some things. And what, what it means for me to be able to have activities and maybe you're the same way. You say, well, why are you doing this? Because we are so ungrateful. We don't want to think about what we have. I'm thankful for Yeti. That's <laughs> <laughs> not a real yet. I am, okay, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I am thankful, and if you do not have a Yeti tumbler, you need, they make fun of me because I swear by this. I got it as a Christmas gift this past year, but I am. It's the simple things in life. Right, I put this coffee in here. Well, that food, I'm thankful for food. Uh, are you thankful? You know, you say, well, why would you put that up there? I'll tell you why, because there's somebody hungry this morning. You're full. Maybe you have to do a pop card on your shirt. Right? There's somebody that's hungry this morning. What else? Is my list over yet? Good night. Thank you. Uh, but that's part of my list. And you say, that's kind of ridiculous. I don't know why you would put that up there. And, and, and really, I just want you to see it in visual form. We have come to a place as a society, as a country, as a church, where we are, we are so absolutely neglectful when it comes to understanding the grace and the goodness that God has given us. Like there's no reason in here that anyone should be unthankful. You say, well, I'm going through some hard stuff. I'm dealing with some difficult things right now. I understand that. I get it. I really do. I understand that life is hard. I understand life is difficult at times. I understand things happen. I get it. But you don't have a reason. There's not one reason that you can't find something to be thankful for. But we spend so much time. Have you ever noticed the American people? Have you ever noticed people in our community? Have you ever noticed yourself, maybe? We spend more time complaining than we do sitting around talking about the good stuff that's going on in our life. And we wrap things up around and say, well, I don't want to boast, and I don't want to brag. You know what? You know what? I'm done with that kind of thing. Well, you know what's wrong with every now and then sitting around and really bragging on what Jesus has done in your life? Amen. Let me explain something to you. If you're not going to brag and praise Him, you know what? You'll give those blessings to somebody else that will actually point people in the right direction of where the blessings have come from. We need to go from criticizing to absolutely sharing, sharing, how great God is. And I just want to say this to you from the bottom of my heart this morning. I am thankful today. 
Most people don't know me and just get to see me from here or maybe pass me. Everybody. You don't know what kind of person I am. And I'm a little bit off the wall. My brain is a little, little bit goofy. But I'm telling you, by nature, I'm a thankful individual. I'm thankful for the friend. I've got some of the greatest. I can say this wholeheartedly and mean it with all of my heart this morning. I have some of the, the greatest friends I have ever had in my 36 years of life. And they're here inside of this body, bar none. And I'm thankful. It's a, it's a trick when I think about God bringing my family here and how He has surrounded it with blessings. Some of the greatest days of our lives have been lived out together. I'm thankful for what God is doing in my family's life. I'm thankful for what He's doing in the church's life. Thankfulness breeds, listen, a thanksgiving lifestyle. Can I explain something to you? We're going to have something, or uh, Thanksgiving lunch. We're going to start Thanksgiving stuff this week uh, with my family. This, there's not enough lunches or dinners to have for me to even go through while I'm so thankful. Maybe some of us in here, you've forgotten what you're thankful about. Maybe life's hit you square between the eyes and instead of walking around and going, you know what, I'm thankful. I'm just glad to be breathing today. You ever woke up in the morning and it'd be so bad you just go, I'm just glad to be breathing. <laughs> you ever had those moments? You ever life just, listen, life is so rough that the only thing you thank God for is that you're standing straight up? See, thankfulness and a thankful lifestyle, thankful living, breeds certain things. And this morning I want to talk about it as we kick off this series, this introduction. And the idea is, is because of what God has done in your life and the thankfulness that comes from it, it would spur you to be different and to live differently. That you would take inventory of how good God's been to you and that you would do something about it with the life that you live. You say, Philip, are you going to talk about giving financially over the next couple of weeks? I am. I am. I would encourage you not to skip church, too. You going to talk about it every week? No, nah, probably not. I might. I don't know. You say, well, I don't know if I want to come to church and talk about money. Why not? Why not? You turn your TV off when Edward Jones comes on TV and talks about your money? When you're watching UT last night and the first Tennessee Baker, Tennessee, comes on and starts talking about your money, you turn the TV off? No. When you went down there and had your car work on and get the old tape, they said, that's going to be $29.95. And you jump in and just wheel out and say, you're being ridiculous. <laughs> I'll not pay it. But when it comes to Christ in your money, you get a little nervous. Why? Why? He's the one that gave it to you. You don't ever take your children and go to God and feel bad for praying about how you should raise them. If I said you have problems with your children and you say, well, what should I do about it? I'm going to see what I'd do is I would take my children and I'd pray for them. I'd talk to God because He's the one that gave it to you. He's the one that can help raise you, be the best parent in raising them and send them in the right direction. Nobody else can do that for you. God's the one that gave it to you, so why don't you talk to the one that gave it to you? And you would all say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. That's why I've got them in church. That's why I've got them in Sunday school. That's why I've got them in Wednesday night. That's why Andy's born in the life. That's why Tyler's talking to them. So if that's the case with your children, why is it not the same with your finances? But the real reason I want to talk about finances is not so that you'll give, give more so that we can buy planes and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's bogus. The real reason is because I'm, I'm looking to see a church that goes so crazy that literally lifts off the page what the Bible says about people who are thankful. And we give from a resource that is divine that we, we find that we cannot outgive God. And by us giving over and above that we are absolutely changing lives. Listen to me. My goal would be that God would turn you into a funnel so that your life would be, be meeting the needs of those who need to find it. The Bible says no way that thoughtful is faithful living, not only through your finances, but through your life itself. How do you live your life? How do you go? How do you serve? There's people that have been my voice this morning, they're not serving Jesus Christ. And it comes down to just one simple fact. It's because you're not thankful of the life that Jesus Christ has given you. When you come to a place that you're thankful for the life that God's given you, you cannot keep it to yourself. You want to give it away. It's a thankful living. So what does it mean to be thankful? Well, uh, there's certain things to be thankful for. I've shared with you my list, but the egos on and on. Jesus, my salvation, my hope, 
my family, my health. Are you thankful that you're healthy this morning? If you are, uh, if you're not thankful for that, then talk to someone who is in the midst of trying to battle cancer, and I guarantee you'll be thankful. Are you thankful for the finances that you got? Are you thankful for the church that you got? See, here's the thing is we got to come to a place where we're thankful for what God has done in our life. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you ready? I'm about to preach a minute, and I hope that it hits you square between the eyes because I've been dealing with this in this particular passage for several weeks, and I've, I've, I've I just want God to keep using me uh, in, in, in regard to this in my own personal life. But here's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. Paul writes to this church in Corinth, and here's what he says. He says, it is excessive for me to even write to you about this ministry, but I want to write to you about it. And here's what he said to him. He said, I'm about to share with you about the understanding of giving. Listen to me. When you hear the word giving, don't put dollar sign on it. When you hear the word giving, put your life there. Now, your life encompasses every other thing, which is your heart for health, your uh, money side for your finances, your children for your family, your talents for what you bring to the table, your work by how it allows you to do what you do. But think about when we're talking about giving you whole as a person, every area of your life. And Paul says to this church in Corinth, he says, it's excessive for me to even mention it to you. But let me just say this to you. You all have stepped up and you have said to this church that you're going to send them a bountiful gift. Is exactly what they call it in Scripture, the first five verses. This church in Corinth was going to send back finances so that they could actually take care of the church in Achaia that was trying to get up and going. And the church in Corinth, they said, we want to sponsor you. We want to take care of what you need. We want to make sure that church gets up off the ground. So Paul writes them, and he says to this in the first part, it's a little history lesson. He says, listen, it's excessive for me to even say it to you, but I'm writing you to remind you that you need to follow through with what you said you were going to do for this church because in doing so, you prove to them who God is in your life. At the same time, let me say this to you, is that if you don't follow through with giving like you have claimed to be giving, then it's going to be shameful for you and it's going to be shameful for the church. But then he says this, and this is what I want you to see in verse 5. He says, in giving, whether it's your life, your finances, your talents, or your time, whatever it is, the greatest enemy of living a thankful life of giving is covetousness, greed. It's this. I have the opportunity to take care of something. I want to help with it. God has blessed me beyond measure. And I want to help reach out and take care of this. And you know what we do? And before it ever gets to the point where I can actually take care of it, I find something else in my own life that I want to take care of first. And then I say this, I'm going to take care of this in my own life. And then I'm going to take care of that in that other life. And you know what happens is you never get to the place where you help someone else because you're continually putting stuff in your own life. And it pulls down to you what's called to call grief. So I'm going to give my time to help those kids over there in the children's ministry, but you never end up showing up because every night something comes up, every night you say yes to everything else and you say no to that. Why? Because all of a sudden you find something more valuable to do to your time. Sitting here this morning, you see, I've got talents, I've got gifts. These drums that sit here, they have not been played in several, several, several weeks. Some of you are going, thank God. Right? You know, like some of us are going, why not? Well, our, our drummer is sick. He battles some sicknesses. And so we're, we're praying for him. But one of the other ones can't be here all the time. But you don't want to hear what I know. Because there's other people in here who can do stuff. You can do it. I love to practice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're not Alan Iverson. Never said practice. We talking about practice? <laughs> practice, man. Yeah, we talking about practice. Right? But you know what happens? In a simple little thing about beating on something with a couple of sticks, you know what you do? You have others praise Christ. You've got talent while you're sitting on it. You've got gifts while you're sitting there. We've got guys that are here all the time working on computers, on sounds, doing all kinds of Tony stepped out of the sound book today. Whatever it was you were doing, which was awesome. Why? Because he refused to sit on his talents and gifts and say, I'm so thankful that God's blessed me. I'm so thankful that God's healed my head. I would be sinning if I didn't give it away. You're not going to hear this in every other church. I'm just telling you. You're not going to find a pastor like me in every other church. And that's quite okay. But I'm, I'm trying to raise up a church body. I'm trying to raise up a bunch of followers of Jesus Christ that are, are willing to go to the grave with the zebra because you gave it all away. Give it all away. Now this morning, the way I understand it, I know what's happened on the other campus. I want you, I want you to get this. Because see, he said it's excessive 
meaning, I know you already know this, and then you come back to the church of Corinth and he says, but the, the thing that will battle that is covetousness. Right? That something will pop up in your life that will be more important, that will take you away from what God's called you to do, whether it's with your finances, your, your talents, your gifts, or whatever it might be. You know what people say? Sometimes you get characterized as this, or maybe a church gets characterized, or maybe me, or whatever. But sometimes you say, well, he's got the best intentions. He just doesn't follow through. You know anybody like that? People make promises all the time never follow through. My kids trust me about that sometimes. Dad, can we throw football tomorrow? Dad, can we do this? We'll do it later. It doesn't become personal until my kids look at me and go, you know, the past three days you can't say you should do it, but every time you get home, you're too tired to walk them out with us. You know what I do? I feel like a scumbag. I've made promises and not followed through. You know what the Bible says? That some of us have made promises to God. Here, let me tell you this. On the day that you accept, this is just a good word. I don't care who you are. This is a good word. On the day that you accept that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, whether you were nine years old like I was, or whether you were 39 years old like some of the other ones, on the day that you accept that Christ is your Savior, somewhere in between, you were so thankful that Jesus Christ stepped out of heaven and went to the cross. You said, Jesus, Jesus, if you're saving, I'll do everything you want to. I'll do whatever you want me to in my life. That's what you said. Just save me. And you know what happened? You accepted His free gift of grace. And since that time, you've had the greatest of intentions of giving something back to Him, but you set on your blessed assurance and blessings are never giving out through your life. This morning, there were clear plastic bags that came in at the LC campus and they had clothes in them. I don't know what all of them were. I don't know what all y'all put in them bags. And we're doing that here too, right? Next, next week, right? And you're going to get a clear plastic bag. We've done Operation Christmas Child for so long. And this year we switched it up just a little bit. Kind of really put, put our, our gifts, our shoe boxes, where they need to go. But instead of using gift boxes, we're using plastic bags. Which works better for TSA, apparently. Uh, but uh, these kids were walking in and they'll see. Last week they had an opportunity to go by a table like here. And they took names off the thing. And they left families, whole families. I think there was, there was several several names, like 70 or 80 names. They took these names. They don't know who they are. And most of them they can't even pronounce them because they're Honduran names. So we don't even know how to pronounce them. You know, most of us are hillbillies. I don't know if y'all recognize that. Most of y'all have a hard enough time to say y'all's name. That's why most of y'all in here have uh, a young nickname. And so, uh, you can't spell it anyway, right? And so, uh, so they take these names. And this morning, well, I want you to see this. And I've had a hard couple of months. But this morning when God was walking through the auditorium where I was, I about had a shower table because I saw what the pro was doing. And these little boys, these little girls, these moms and dads, they had their clear bags and they were just trying to get people to say, but they didn't even know I was watching. And here they come and they got the clear bags and they're all through, they're all the way up to the brim. They just got that, that bag of zip off and their stuff sticking out everywhere. And they got them because you told them what to put in there. And they got them and they're going. And they walked out into the lobby there at the LC campus and they took one bag, two bag, three bag. These little boys, there was one of Jackson, he's about six years old here. He come through, he dropped it, he kicked it across the floor. He picked it up, he smiled at me like, I really done something today, you know? And so he puts it in the box. And what you don't know, and what that campus don't know, and I was trying to explain this morning, is that there's answers to prayer sitting in the lobby of our church. That today, this morning, while we're fussing about how cold it is, this little boy woke up this morning, and you know what he heard? He heard a spoon, he had an empty bowl, and it won't be full all week. His shoes are falling apart. He's never been to the dentist and got the little goodie bag that your kids get, and they throw it up on the counter, and you can throw it away, a little tooth, toothpaste, little toothbrushes, all the time. That's it. I'm bringing stuff home. He's never even seen it. And he tell you why. Pick up some more soap at the store. Get some of that body wash. Maybe some of y'all are going, I need a new Lucas sponge. Whatever. They don't even know what it is. And little Jackson walked through that auditorium this morning. Dropped it in a bucket. A little Andre. Little Elizabeth. Jose. Walking on dirt floors, on dirt roads, looking to a big 
big sky, wondering if all the stuff these missionaries tell them is true, that there's a God who cares. And they don't know that there's blessings and answers to prayers setting in our auditorium. in a few weeks it's going to be delivered because that bag going to be your name and they're going to call on you that have been there they don't understand that those kids will be sitting very politely waiting waiting to hear their name called and when their name's called they won't know what mama they won't know what daddy they won't know what teenager was folding those little items putting those clothes in there, putting those hygiene products in there. They won't know about Mom Jackson kicking it across the church, thought he missed it. They won't know. They'll just know it showed up. And they got it. You say, why would you say that? Because not everybody's doing it. You know why I leave this church to do that? You know why Drew leads? church to do things like that? You say, well, we got another box in our own community. What are you doing to help our own community? Well, if you'll stop talking and start listening, here's what you'll find out. Is in another week, we're going to have a grow go only for our community. That the little boys and the little girls that are in the apartments that never get fed. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't see straight. I've got my man Travis from Gloria Jeans. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's just take a moment. <laughs> when they said Southern Fire for provisions, they were not lying. Some of y'all gonna have the Southern Brunch over there and ball over fish. My man Travis, the main man, the main cook, the main dude, our man Robert Bender, but Travis is loading up glorious Jesus stuff. And they going over King Four. And on Road Road Weekend, some of those folks that have never stepped out of that complex to ever have some southern fine provision. Fine southern provision. We take it to them. They're going to have the best meatloaf in all of Roman County on the place. So if you ain't had that meatloaf, I, I, I mean, I need to just take a break and say, thank you, Lord. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes. I'm going to plate green beans as a side. I have no idea what kind of dessert the man will do, but if it's anything like he does already, it'll be something with Krispy Kreme donuts or something all thrown in a bowl, and you don't know what you just ate, but it was, I mean, it was like shouting heaven down in a bowl. It was so good. You know what I'm talking about? You know what we did? We didn't say just give him a bunch of pizzas. That's easy. We didn't say, hey, we're going to have this little thing down here at the church to take our leftovers down there. We didn't do that. You know what we did? We said, who's the best? Go get them. And you give those that are hungry today the best. Because when I was hungry, Jesus gave me his best. Mm. Man. So he said, thanks for living. So, so what's he say? He says, don't let covetousness keep you from it. So, so what do we need to love here this morning? Well, a, a couple of things, and I'm finished because this is an introduction. 2 Corinthians 9 12 says this for the ministry, and here's the reason that we want to get the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also that here, here's the thing. See, sometimes if you see giving as only supplying a need, then it's easy to become detached from that and just give a check and provide it. Or just to offer a service and provide it. And that's good. That's what God intends to do. Is he takes the talents to give the resources that we have that He's already given us to provide for the needs of those that are in need. And that's good. And He says this ministry is not only supplying for the needs of the saints or the people that need it. Listen, that not only is He doing that, but here's the main reason that we live a life of thankfulness and giving. Why would I have thankful living giving? Why would I be that way? Because, and here it is, is that it is also overflowing through many thanksgiving to God. See, my thankful living, which provides an opportunity for me to give, takes someone who doesn't know God or wanting to see God move or praying for God, you know what it does is it changes their life 
Now, but they know who God is because He's placed them through answering their prayer. Now, they're thanking God. If I said, hey, we come up with this offer, uh, awesome opportunity, uh, I just need two hours out of you, and if you'll do this one thing, just do it, you're going to have everybody in your own camera thanking God and praising God and coming to know Him. I think everybody in the room will stand up and say, i got two hours to go. And the Bible says that it's a way of living your life. Guess what? I'm thankful this morning that I have my health. So you know what I want to do? I want to help people who don't. I'm thankful this morning that I have my family. I'm thankful for my children. Thankful for my wife. So what do I want to do? I want to help people who don't. I think about my children, and I'm already thankful for the fact that they're going to have Christmas, and my children will put together their Santa list, and they have lost their minds. <laughs> they have. They have lost their minds. But you know what? I think about my children. My children will not go without war. Over the next two months, they will not. Because you all take care of me, and I take care of them, and I'm thankful for the way you take care of me, so that I can take care of them, and they're thankful too. They just don't know it yet. But you know what I do now that I see a picture of my family and how they're being taken care of? You know what I want to do? Is I want to take care of the children that are not being taken care of. So what are you going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to show up on December 21st, and we're going to provide Christmas for a bunch of children that will never have in their home. I had people pull me aside and I said this. They said, well, you can't do that because last year you gave bicycles away. And I'm telling you, within a week or two, here's what happened. Some of those parents took those bicycles back, said they took them back to Walmart where you all bought them, got the money for them, bought drugs with them. What do you think about that? I think you just need to stop. Just need to stop. Don't do nothing because it's going to keep on whatever. And so, well, I'm not going to let the sin of one keep us from giving the blessings out to those that need it. So what are you going to do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because on December 21st, we're going to provide a Christmas for these children. In the middle of that's a Monday, we're going to provide a Christmas for them that is more than a gift. It is an experience. We're going to give them an experience. And I don't care who's out there with them or who their landlord is or whatever it might be. There's no one that's going to be able to take them away from them. We're going to do it. I'm going to blow up on the bus. I'm going to take them somewhere. This year you're taking them somewhere? You better believe it. When they lay their head down on December 21st, they'll know that there's a church out there that loves them enough to provide for them something. This won't save them, you're, you're, you're right at home. But you know what? I'm so thankful that God has given me 365 days a year. I'm going to give those kids my best, just like I give my kids. I'm going to be able to those kids on that day, so they can at least have one day out of the year where God shows mercy and grace and gives them love to me. And this church is going to do it. We're going to give them a gift, too. Are we going to rip the tags off of them? We're going to threaten them. We're going to tell the people, we get them wrong. If they come back in and you call me, I know some old boys out of the road that are sort of saved. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs one or two of those good friends. You know, the work at your salvation with fear and trembling. You want that one buddy, he's still working. He's in the beginning stages. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sit him. So what do we need to know? Let me give you my three things. And, and, and this is not just, just three statements. There's a reason to be thankful today when you leave here. And we're going to start on this next week. There's a reason to be thankful. The reason, you ready? 2 Corinthians 9 15 says this the reason to be thankful. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. I'm thankful today because of Jesus Christ. I am. I'm thankful because you, some of you all know me a little bit. I know me a lot of bit. God knows me whole. And even in all three of those aspects, you know what Jesus Christ does? He still saved me on the cross. Paul says it this way. So if you ever come to a place where you really appreciate your salvation, like when you really get it, like salvation isn't just about a mansion in heaven, although that's cool. And salvation isn't just about streets of gold, although that's awesome. And salvation isn't just about the crystal sea, although with a bunch of you light boys around here like a fish, I can't imagine what's in the bottom of it. <laughs> and all that's great. But salvation is about the fact that Jesus Christ died on a cross for me. And then if the mansion didn't exist, and if the roads were made out of dirt, and if this crystal sea was dirty, 
I'd still want my salvation because Jesus Christ bled and died for me. And there's days I look in the mirror and I don't realize it more than others because I know how much I don't deserve it. And I'm looking at myself and going, what kind of, uh, what kind of piece of trash are you? And Jesus said, save me. I love you. You know what happens? I'm thankful. And no matter how hard life gets, no matter what goes on in my life, there's one thing that people can't take from you. They take your name. They take your job. They can try to take your family. But they cannot take you. And a Bible have it now and now. Now try to describe it. How are you going to describe Jesus? If you've been delivered from the addiction and it had you by a chokehold and was holding you down and you were about to die, if that were your life, and like your psalmist did in Psalm 116, he said, I beseech you, Lord, save me. And Jesus showed up, saved you, set your feet on the straight narrow, helped you deal with the demons of the past, gave you a future like no other, and now I ask you, put him in words. Paul said, it's indescribable. I would try to tell you who Jesus is to me, but I would fail you. And fail him. It's like this. It's like me trying to tell my five children that I love them all. The same. We were coming back last week. Uh, we had taken the boys to Panthers Titans football game. They got me for their birthday. And so uh, that was the Sunday that we took them. So we were, it was just me, maybe, and the boys, and my mom and dad. And we were driving back. I was driving. And my mother was kind of giving the boys a hard time. And, yeah, if you had a good birthday, would you like to yeah, have him? And the best, yeah, yeah. And so naturally it went into uh, me and Mandy and how we parent the kids. And my mother was kind of having a roll. Like, well, how's your mom? Do you like your mom? Do they think you? Does your daddy do what I've told you to do? Does he think And the boy says, no. <laughs> and we all in that car together. And she said, well, what's wrong? And she said, the said, I'll just tell you, man, I'll just tell you. My dad, he likes my hair the best. <laughs> she said, is that right? She said, yeah, yeah, I'm just telling you. Did you know that if we start to believe and go get something to eat, and mom and dad are saying, what do you want to eat? And we try to tell them what we want to eat. Do you know that they both turn around and look at us and tell us we ain't got an opinion? <laughs> they do? She said, yes. Well, what about Mahalo? Well, they let Mahalo have whatever she wants. Said, <laughs> so, well, have you talked to your dad about it? I said, yeah. I'm oh, listening. I'm driving. This is happening in my back. They're not even being quiet. Said, so, well, Dad, here's all that happens. She gets up in his lap and she cries and says that we did something, but we didn't do it. Says they're being mean to me. And she said, well, what's your dad do? Says he gets mad. And then once he gets, she's lying to us, lying to him. And well, what's he say next? He says, he don't want to hear it. He's the only girl he's got. And he, they better, we better leave her alone. He says, maybe, I don't think she's ever gotten in trouble one time since I've been born. That's what they said. And she said, well, that, he, he loves you more than the No, no, he loves my hand the most. That's what she said. I tried to explain it to them. They don't believe me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> If that little girl, when I'm laying in a hospital in one of them assisted homes, and I'm old, and everybody's gone, I buried all of y'all, there's a whole new crowd. And I'm over there drooling on myself. Can't get the glory to get the meatloaf. You think them boys are going to help me? No. But my daughter will. <laughs> you can't describe the love that you, in all seriousness you can't describe the love that you have for your children to your children they won't understand to try to describe what Jesus Christ is saying it's the reason to be thankful here's the attitude to be thankful the attitude of thankfulness leads to a life of thankful living you know what the Bible says we're going to death over this one day before we see what the Bible says each one must do just as he has proposed his heart ungrudgingly or under caution for God loves a cheerful giver you know, it's interesting God said he, he, he loves a cheerful giver. Why would he say that? Because he said to put up with some of some cheerful givers. The offer's going to come around here just a little bit. Some of y'all are not going to put in. He ain't put in for weeks and months. I just can't afford to, though. I would argue you can't afford not to. 
One of the reasons every time it keeps coming by, you ain't got nothing to put in is because you ain't never put in the first time. But you, you know what you might find is if you put in and trust God with your finances, he might fill the bucket back up. But as long as you're going to walk around and try to take care of your stuff, there's a hole up on your bucket, he can't fill it with you. That's a good word. See, the cheerful giver. He, you know, it's, not hard, it's not hard to be a cheerful giver when you're doing something practical. Have you ever tried to go to a feeding truck or try to feed people and you're down there going, Golly, people just keep on getting hungry. Can I have a bowl of beans? Yeah, yeah you can. I guess. If you'd eat them and stop getting hungry so much, I wouldn't have to come back here so much. You don't do that. You're thankful. You see the smile on the face. Cheerful giver. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 27, Do not withhold good from those who, to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. All day long he is craving, we're talking about the sluggard in relation there, while the righteous gives and does not hold back. Proverbs 28, 27 says, He who gives to the poor will never want, but he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. The outcome of thankful giving is bountiful blessing. Would come on up here, man. I'm not finished. I'm just stopping. We're going to pick up here next week. The Bible says this. If you're thankful. See, a life of thanksgiving and thankfulness for what God's done in our leads us to do more with our life so that others might thank you. You know, and this morning, he said, so why are you talking about this? Well, because we're going to talk about your health. And because you're thankful for the life that God's given you, how do you use the life that He has given you? We're going to talk about our families. I can't ask you to pour into somebody else's family when you don't appreciate the one that you got. If you don't appreciate them or are thankful for what you got around you, you'll never pour into somebody else. We're going to talk about your finances. We're going to talk about the fact that God blessed you financially. Why wouldn't you give it away? We're going to talk about all those different things. But you know what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9? Here it says, it says, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap it sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap it bountifully. There's going to come a day that I really am going to die. Unless God comes back. And on that day, I thought about it. I, I guess I keep mortality in my, in my sight just because I deal with it. People see it, people die. So I think about myself sometimes. And I think about what it would be. I'm just being honest. I'm sharing my heart. This is how I preach. This is how I come up with these messages. I hope one day when you're gray and old and you've sat through this ministry for a while and you've seen all the great things that God's done. And maybe if you ever walk by my body and my wife's there and my children are grown and they're married and they got kids and grandkids are running around, I hope you can see those days. I don't know what I will, but I hope I do. And you walk by me. You know what I hope? This is my prayer. This is my prayer. I pray it every day. God, I want to live a life such a way that I've given more away than I've ever taken. I hope when you walk by me, I'm not known for what I have. Them boys, my daughter, are not in here. But I hope I'm not even known for what I left on this earth. In fact, the people when I die, thanks for calling their addresses so they said, I have a book to say you pay every month. <laughs> I hope I die with you. Know. I hope that God would raise me up to be a fun. Everything that I have because I feel like what God gives to me, I just want to give it away. I just want to give it up. So y'all do stuff all the time. We talk about stuff all the time. You know why? Because I'm thankful for what God does with us. I want to give it away. So well, what if you don't have it? Then, then you probably do have it. What are you going to do in that case? I'm going to help you give it away. If I find out you got it, I'm going to help you give it away. You say, well, that's, that's great. That's called theft. No. It's how God blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else. And God forbid God bless our socks off and we sit and keep it when there's those that need it. See, there can never be enough given on a Sunday morning. There can be never enough done on a no-go weekend. There can never be enough plastic bags. 
There could never be enough mission trips. You know why? Because there's more people out there with needs than we can possibly ever meet. But you know what the Bible says? Is that if we will be about God's plan to give, 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 He will always make sure the bucket's full that we're giving from. But the moment that we stop, the bucket dries up. Are you thankful this morning? We're going to have time to bring the but I don't even know what this is all about. Oh, yeah, you do. It's about Thanksgiving. It's about being thankful. It's about what you do with your life. I would pray that we get to the point where we are so spiritual givers to people around us here that think we've gone absolutely nuts. And we're just giving it away laughing about it. <laughs> but why did I listen to the truth? I haven't got to give me a check this week. I don't know why I'm telling you this in this question. I haven't got to give me a check this week. And uh, I said, I can't take that. He said, Dick, I said, no, I can't. I didn't even know. He said, I want you to have it. I said, no, I, I, I can't. Mm -mm. I'm just thankful for you, thank you for preaching, thank you for doing all stuff. I said, I don't want it. He said, well, um, you're going to take it. I said, well, if I give it back to you, will you do something else with it? He said, why would you do something else with it? He said, God's off the street. He gave me that. I had it. I sent it to church service. I didn't have it. Five, ten minutes. Never opened it. Never looked at it. Never did anything with it. And as soon as the plate was up, the, the, the offering was up, I gave it. I said, maybe put that on the plate. Put it on the plate. I don't even know how to take care of the offering today. We were driving home. Maybe says, so how much is on the check? I said, I don't know. She said, you don't know? I said, no. I said, do you know? She said, no. I said, huh. They could have been a million dollars we've been praying for. <laughs> and you gave it away! You know what I tell me? She said, she said something to me. I said, you know what I meant? And there is what I never had. And somebody today benefited from somebody else's generosity. All I got to be was the father. Would you be the father of that? You can only 